Vine's next film, Flashdance, the innovative blend of rock and roll, new dance styles, and breathtaking imagery, created a sensation in 1983. Lion's Bravura visual style blended perfectly with Giorgio Moroder's powerful score to propel the story of an aspiring ballerina who worked in a factory by day and danced in a club at night. The film starred newcomer Jennifer Beals. I just didn't like the story. I thought it was kind of dumb. I, 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 I wasn't crazy about it, and, and, and I turned it down a, a couple of times, maybe three, which was sort of difficult for me to do because I could tell that they were going to spend the $8 million on the movie. And so finally I said yes, and I, I suppose it shows that you should have an open mind, really. You know, I think it's very dangerous sort of waiting and waiting and waiting for the perfect movie to appear. And I, I thought, well, you know, maybe I can make the dances interesting. I had an idea that I wanted to do a wet dance. And I didn't really know quite how to do the wet dance, but I, I just knew I wanted, wanted to do a wet dance because I hadn't seen that. And I knew that, that it would it'd be sexy, obviously, you know, because the, the, the clothes would cling to the body, etc. And so I remember sh trying to show the studio heads and it was in a sort of a rehearsal studio, and there were sort of bleachers there, and all of, all of the, the studio heads were at the top of these bleachers, and I was down at the bottom with Jeffrey Hornaday and this poor girl, and I had a hose pipe, and I was kind of winding the horse, hose pipe around this girl, trying to show these poor people what the wet dance was going to be like. And obviously no, there was no lighting, there was nothing to, to make it look exciting. And I, all I could see was this desperate skepticism on their faces and that, that they were doomed, that the, that the movie was in the toilet, you know. I went to audition, and I remember Adrian wanted to, I know what he, he wanted to make sure that I had an emotional range. He wanted to, you know, have the lightness, but he also wanted to see me cry. And he basically said that to me, he said, I need to see that. And so I did, which is really what I was ready to do anyway, because I'd been living in New York on blueberries pretty much for three days. And I went back home, and they called me out again to do another dance um, audition. And then I went back to Chicago and I got in my car and I drove from Chicago to New Haven, Connecticut, because I, where I was going to school, because I didn't think that I would get it. I mean, to me, it was just an adventure. So that when I got the phone call that I had the movie, I just kept saying, you know, you're kidding. No, you're, you're kidding. No, come on, you're kidding. No, no, you're kidding. I really thought that I had pulled one over on somebody. Uh, they have music in Altoona? Well, my father, he loves music. This one time, he took us all to the symphony, my whole family. It was supposed to be this really big deal. At first, I didn't like it very much. I mean, there's nothing really to do with your feet, and there's nothing really to look at. It's boring. And I was ready to nod out or something. And he said to me, if you close your eyes, you can see the music. You can, too. Did you ever try? See the music. They didn't have somebody come in and double for me. They had four people come in and double. Because if I couldn't do something, then I had one dance double. If she couldn't do it, then you had another person. If that person couldn't do it, then there was a gymnast that came in. I mean, there was a young boy who did some of the dancing, you know, and the poor thing had to shave his legs and put on a little leotard. It was very embarrassing for him. I remember the, the final audition scene when, um, when she dances for this panel. We, we used four or five different people to, to make the dance work, to goose the dance up and make it exciting. And that, I think, is exciting when nobody knows that, you know.
he's incredibly, incredibly passionate. And he's not, you know, just off the film. He's not unlike Quentin in that way. They're very alive. I mean, Adrian is very, very alive and very passionate about films, but passionate visually in a way that I've never worked with anybody who's been that passionate visually. I always remember when we were um, casting the movie and we hadn't decided on Jennifer Beals. We, we were seeing, it came down to three or four girls, of which Jennifer Beals was one. And uh, so we needed a man to lie in bed, actually, with, with Jennifer and also to run the scene with her. So there was a man called Kevin Cosner, who I would worked with on, on a commercial, funny enough, and who I remember... Um, lay in bed with Jennifer Beals for 200 bucks. I remember what he got paid. And at that time, I think he was a carpenter, you know, at Raleigh Stu Studios, in fact. He, was a, he only did it sort of part-time. <laughs>